book. Um, as you probably have heard before, this is an adaptation of a, a talk earlier on that I've done. Um, in this talk, we're going to be talking about AWS Inspector and how can we integrate it with serverless architecture to move security to the left. I'm going to go through the agenda today is a quick introduction about myself. Um, what's AWS Inspector? Um, how vulnerability assessment and action. And that's the dif differentiation here. Um, and then what happens when your rogue sysadmin, this is one of the, the title of the topic, taking down the rogue sysadmin, um, goes and bypasses the pipeline, what happens in, in this current architecture? And then after that, the floor is open for Q&A. Um, now, I personally am uh, not going to put my personal polls in there, but more than happy to answer any questions as it goes. Um, quick introduction. My name is Marwan. Um, I am a uh, technical principal at Contino in Sydney. Um, I'm the uh, cloud security and DevSecOps practice lead. Uh, my background is networks and sysadmin, and um, it's in fintechs, telcos, MSPs, that sort of space. A um, few things about me. Um, I am more into cloud and infrastructure architecture than the app space. Um, definitely into infrastructure as code and security and DevOps and those sort of things. But um, if we start talking about Manchester United, I'm not going to stop talking. So maybe uh, let's not go there. Um, so the first, the first thing we're going to talk about is the problem. What was life before vulnerability assessment tools, um, and um, what would you do, and how, and um, how would you react to those? Um, the, the problem space segment speaks for itself. So security has always been an afterthought. Um, it never ran parallel to delivery. It never ran across the delivery model. Um, it was not proactive in terms of delivering outcomes. Um, your remediation was not automatic. It was more, um, I'll deliver a workload and then, and then after I'm live, I'll get a penetration testing team to test and come back to me or vulnerability assessment tool to scan and provide me with reports. Um, and in most occasions, it was a one-off yeah, one engagement. <laughs> As a one-off engagement, it was mostly a um, statement of work that you provide to your, um, that you raise internally, get approval, and your consultants will come in and do a pen test. But as you deliver patches, you don't know what's going on in there. Um, as you move more and more towards a um, cloud operational model and uh, in AWS specific, we start seeing and making use of these native tools that can do these things for us. So for example, um, you start seeing something like AWS Inspector. Um, Inspector is one of these services that flow under the radar. Um, it's a vulnerability assessment tool. Um, it's basically, it's, a, it's an automated security scanning for your workloads, your compute workloads. Um, and that's um, EC2s um, mostly. Um, it helps you see, it helps you fix your security posture. But as it stands, it supports automation given it's in the AWS land and it integrates with um, SNS topics. And this is, this is a key thing that we're gonna be touching on. Um, it provides you infrastructure assessment, application assessment, um, benchmarking against well-known frameworks like CIS, and a lot more than that. Um, if I go over an overview of it, um, it's got native support for DevSecOps because I can integrate it with SNS and Lambda, which means I, I can integrate it with my code pipeline or I can expose an API gateway that's going to trigger that Lambda for it or that SNS topic. Um, I get findings reports, and those findings reports in this example, I'm also going to integrate them into my pipeline. Um, I get complete automation through APIs, um, cross-account scans, and this has only been made available over the last two years. Uh, where you have a central security account, for example, that you can scan across accounts. Um, and this would be sort of your read-only account or your security CISO account sort of thing. Um, you can scan hosts, you can scan networks, you can um, scan an application on a host. Um, 
and you get a, pre a predefined list of rules. Now you get your network reachability rules, um, and those are agent lists, for example. A network agent reachability rule tells you, for example, that this host is accessible over the internet on known ports. For example, you've got SSH open to the internet to the rest of the world. You shouldn't be doing that. Right? These are a predefined set of rules. But some other rules, for example, um, like CIS benchmarks, and this is one of the rules I'm going to fail in this um, assessment um, on purpose. It's going to go and say, you're not following CIS benchmarks. You've got critical items that I have failed. I'm going to take action on this. So we've mentioned a number of times that it fits in the AWS landscape and it fits in the um, serverless context. But how does that happen? Um, what's native support for it? So um, at a high level, um, as a native AWS service, um, you can see it's got exposed, um, it's got exposed APIs and it's got, it's got the ability to trigger SNS topics. So in this architecture, um, I've got a CloudWatch event. This could be on a trigger. This could be um, triggered from a, um, the end of my pipeline that is going to start my continuous assessment Lambda. Um, now, this continuous assessment Lambda is going to spin up EC2 images from an existing MI. Um, it's not necessarily, um, you do not have to spin up an existing image from an AMI. You can use a running AMI and scan an existing environment. And once it does, it's going to um, send a notification to another Lambda, and that Lambda is going to analyze inspector findings. Um, in this uh, instance, I have found something that I'm looking for, and I really don't like what I found. And I've instructed my Lambda to either analyze the action or take action. For example, shut down an instance. Um, now, what happens if I put this in a, in a baked pipeline, and when my um, sysadmin goes and releases a, an AMI card, um, at the end of the pipeline, what's going to happen is I'm going to have a uh, um, an inspector instance go and scan that AMI uh, or scan that EC2 instance that was generated from that AMI um, and basically take action if it found something that I'm looking for. Some of the findings example, as I mentioned, uh, for example, at a medium severity, um, disable root, root login over SSH. Um, I'm not sure this should be medium. My my personal perspective is this is high, but again, it's uh, it's uh, up to the classifications of these findings of how how these are available. Especially if this is exposed to the internet, this is when you start getting scanned um, for vulnerabilities. Um, and these are very much this is this is a surface for a brute force attack. Um, once you you know root user is active and can log in over SSH, for example. Um, so this is an example of the findings, and those are findings um, are what are going to trigger an action for me. So if you look at so far, what's Inspector? What sort of features it's got? Um, it's basically a very high level um, vulnerability assessment and vulnerability scanning service. But how do I bake it into? Uh, an, uh, how do I how do I integrate it into serverless architecture? is what, what we're going to have, have a look at next. So where do I start from here? Um, at a very high level. Um, if you work in an enterprise, you know enterprise, enterprises are very slow moving. Um, and to establish a security practice, for example, or if you had a security practice and you want to establish scanning an existing environment, um, that, that process takes time. Um, this is where new market entrants actually have an edge on your enterprise business. They can move fast and they can move, they can adapt very quickly because the environment allows them to. Um, what allow, what uh, AWS allows me to is um, run with very bare minimum to actually keep my environment um, secure. Um, as a security practitioner, the absolute minimum I need is adequate IAM roles. Um, to assume, and that is to assume across accounts if I need to, or to be able to scan a workload, or uh, as well, sorry, as well as AMIs or um, 
EC2 instances that I'm scanning that do have the system manager agents. And that system manager agent is enough to deploy the inspector agent if I want to scan inside the actual environment. If I'm scanning the perimeter, I don't need an agent. As I mentioned before, if you look on um, in the rules packages, the network reachability is agentless. If I want to scan the rest of those, I'll need the agent. Um, so let me show you how easy it is. Um, I'm going to run you through some of the APIs that I've done and how I've created this environment at a high level. And I'm going to show you the results of every API at a high level. And then we'll see what happens next. Now, to get started, um, before anything, I actually started my instance that is vulnerable. Um, so I created this instance, and I'll show you later on what it does um, and why um, why this is this instance is going to fail a security check. Um, it's running a Tutor Micro for obvious reasons. Um, I could, at first, I create an SNS topic. This is the SNS topic that's going to hook my action into my findings. Um, and when I create the um, SNS topic, um, I need to create an assessment target. Now, the assessment target is a collection of instances that I'm going to scan. If I leave it very wide open, it's going to scan every instance in the account, which is exactly what I want as a security professional. This is not what my sysadmin wants. My sysadmin wants, wants me to scan nothing, right? So as a, as a practitioner, I want to scan everything. So I've created a blank assessment target. Um, the next step is I define what I want to scan in my assessment template. Now, in my assessment template, I grabbed every rule package there is. Now, those rule packages are provided to you by AWS. They are maintained by AWS, and they are, provided, they are updated by AWS. So every time there's an update to the CIS benchmarking, um, um, CIS, um, uh, sorry, um, rule package, you get the update automatically. You do not have to do much as long as it's included in your assessment template. And when you run the assessment template, the idea is this is what you get, an ARN for it, not much more. The next up is I subscribe to the event. This is where I subscribe the um, findings into my SNS topic. So I go and tell my SNS to I, I tell uh, my assessment run. When you run, actually trigger this event. But the condition here is trigger this event if there's findings. I'll show you what's uh, what's next. So this is what's left, and I'm going to go through the actual configuration in AWS. Um, what's left is just run a scan, basically. That scan can be automated, can be inside the pipeline, can be anywhere. Um, so let me jump into my um, inspector screen and show you a few things. Um, this is my assessment target. As I mentioned, it's got nothing on it. Now I've already got it installing the agent um, automatically. And this is my assessment template. Now, this template has got all the rule packages, as you've seen uh, when I created it. Um, it runs every three minutes. Uh, it runs, sorry, for a duration of three minutes. Um, so it kills itself after three minutes, uh, just because of cost in this case. Um, and this is the SNS topic I want to trigger only in case of findings. So if I do have findings, I want to trigger this. Now, I can also be a bit more cheeky and create payloads. So when I um, trigger that Lambda, it's based on a payload that says critical or high um, a type of finding. Now, this is the SNS topic that I was mentioning before, and it's got a single subscriber, and that is my Lambda. Now, to go back here, um, before we go there, I'll show you my EC2 instance creation, which is a simple um, EC2 uh, micro. And I'll show you something else. 
this is the script that this EC2 is going to run uh, basically in the user data. And it's going to install HTTPD, uh, which is your web, um, your web server. Um, it's going to create a, a uh, index.html, and it's going to create the php.info file. It's going to create a little HTML um, file that says Ala Falafels. And it's going to put the, the PHP infos into that file. Then it's going to start that um, HTTP server. When it does, it's going to make it's going to mean that you're going to have a problem later on in, during the assessment. Now, here comes the story. So what happens next? Now, obviously, I'm not a Chelsea fan, um, so I'm using them as the rock sysadmin. Um, let's say your company hired a new sysadmin or DevOps engineer, and he's got to leave soon. He's just got a new task to go and deploy an EC2 instance. And our rogue sysadmin has no regards or no time to follow the process, um, opts in to roll out the new EC2 instance through APIs instead of using the pipeline, which is exactly what I did here. Um, I created an EC2 instance. Uh, I'm using a generic AMI um, uh, instead of using the existing um, baked um, SCIS hardened AMI. Um, and I attached a security group that is wide open and I used a user data file called Apache PHP 5, which is the file that I showed you before, which is quite vulnerable. So what happens next? Computer is gonna say no. Um, because I've got this um, scheduled um, and I can have it built into the pipeline, the first thing is gonna happen is SSM is going to make sure that the inspector agent is installed through my scheduled run commands. Um, the next thing that's going to happen is there's a there's a full scan or scheduled scan can be scheduled can be in the pipeline that's going to get triggered. Um, once that scan is triggered, it's going to find all the common vulnerabilities according to the rules package that I've defined in the EC2 instance. And in this case, what I need to do is go into the scan and actually start it now. So it's done by the time I get there. So let me select that and run this. And I'll show you what's going to happen to this running EC2 instance. Um, so what's going to happen is the EC2 instance is going to get scanned. And I'm going to find all the common vulnerabilities in there. And when I do, um, I'm going to have a report with all the findings and with classifications. So I'm going to have my critical findings, my medium findings, my low findings. But also, I'm going to trigger that lambda. And that lambda in this case is going to be um, is going to be stopping the EC2 instance. Now, to show you an example of what that lambda looks like, I'm going to come here and show you this. Now, this is something I cobbled in two minutes. It's not necessarily how you do it in production. Um, my action is to stop the EC2 instance. Um, so let's just wait for it to load. So as you can see, I've, I'm not using a payload. I've got it hard-coded in the instance ID. And all I'm doing is I am doing a, uh, a stop instance. So this is my call. Now, in real life, you would do something different usually. You can um, notify the, the sysadmin or security, um, uh, your security team. Um, if you're in a... In a if you're someone like me, for example, I would revoke the IAM keys for those APIs straight away. Um, you can remove the security group that has an internet exposure and keep the EC2 running. Just remove that public interface, for example. Or you can take instances outside of load balancing target groups or so on and so forth. There's so much you can do. It's up to you because it's running on serverless reaction. It's running as a Lambda. And it's Python. Um, so, before I get there, hopefully the scan has finished. So if I go and refresh this, so the scan has not finished, but if we go into our assessment runs, and I should have triggered that scan a few minutes earlier, but that's my mistake. Um, you can see that my scan is 
running still, and the status is collecting data. Once it's it's done collecting data, I'm gonna start seeing um, multiple multiple findings under here, and this is by design. The reason behind it is I've actually I'm running PHP five, and I'm running an unpatched AMI. I'm running very old stuff, and I'm scanning it against the most rigorous rules there are, which is CIS. Um, so hopefully it will get there very very soon. If not. We'll jump on Q&As and then we'll show it later. Now, if you can have a look at that, you can see has received, uh, Inspector has received 648 48 telemetry messages in total from one agent. This is my simple um, EC2 instance. I've already collected 648 metrics from it. Um, at this stage, Inspector is just trying to sort these findings and um, put them in a nice report where I can see them in this view. Um, while it's still no result, it's still loading because it's running in the background. So it allows me to filter those on high, medium, low, and information depends on how I'd like to see them. But it also taking sweet time to also trigger the Lambda and swap this instance as well. Um, so while it's taking its action, what I'll do is I'm going to go on to Q&A and lessons learned. A um, bit of lessons learned, always keep an eye on supported operating systems. Um, the current environment supports a number of AMIs. Those are available on the AWS website. Um, the general rule is if it's available, it will, if the uh, OS is Yes, it will run. Um, what I found from playing around with this is if the inspector agent deploys, it will scan. Those are two different statements. Right? If the inspector agent installs, um, which is your SSM agent deploying the inspector agent, um, then you should be technically fine. Um, service link trolls, IAM troubleshooting can be difficult. Um, this is if you're scanning across account in an organization and you're following IAM best practices, which you should, and you start using service link trolls, um, occasionally you will run into uh, issues. I came across a couple of problems that were quite difficult to resolve, um, but those were just because I was missing certain um, rights in certain accounts. So you need to be able to scan inside accounts and that is not just scanning um, EC2s. You need to be able to scan ENIs, which are a different group. Um, and you need to be able to push logs back into the account that you're scanning from, if it makes sense. Um, by then, my findings have finished. You can see it's already shut down my EC2 instance. Um, it's now stopped. And there's a reason behind it. Um, the reason why it stopped is because I have found uh, some vulnerabilities. Now, there's few of them. As you can see, the list of highs, um, I made sure it's vulnerable, maybe a bit too much. Um, but yeah, I'm violating CIS operating um, system configuration, system security configuration quite a number of times. Marwin, can I be very rude and just interrupt for a quick question that we've got? Yes. If that's OK. Uh, we've got a question saying, how do you filter false positives from the AWS inspector scan? Very good question. So when you first start with an environment, you're bound to have false positives. And that is not necessarily an environment configuration. SSH on port 22. A port 22 open to the world is not a false positive, right? But um, you may come across um, a use of a mount point that um, the um, the architecture of your file system, for example, is in violation of CIS. Um, what you do, you will always get it as a violation. You can filter on it in the payload in the Lambda, um, or you can um, put it somewhere. You can you can export these and put them in a DynamoDB or all sorts of things, right? Um, it's up to you what you do with the reaction, um, but what you do with with the findings is defined by a subset of rules, if it makes sense. Otherwise, you cut a new AMI that fixes this issue. 
Does that answer the question? I certainly hope so. If not, I'm sure I'm going to hear about it. <laughs> so I've just got like another uh, another quick question for any of the noobs here. Um, can you just give us a bit of an overview of what CIS is all about? Oh, I can definitely share some um, some material around the topic, which makes a lot more sense. So CIS is one of these um, benchmarking, um, one of these security hardening and benchmarking um, frameworks um, that are widely adopted um, in, in the security practice. It, it helps you um, harden your operating system as, as, um, as well as controls around it. Awesome, it's like a sort of consensus-based um, security guidelines, right? For each of the main, the main sort of platforms. Absolutely, and it's uh, very widely respected and adopted in the industry. Um, so you will find um, you, you you will find it in any enterprise space uh, prominent and prevalent um, in any enterprise when you when you need to deploy um, new operating system, especially those are that have governance and compliance frameworks attached to them, like APRA or like um, IRAP and or um, SAS seventy two ISO etc you're always going to come across okay this operating system or this workload that i'm deploying needs to have a cis benchmark operating system and my application similar to in the application space it needs to be os top 10 scanned etc etc yep. and there'd probably be um, a, um aws would probably be trying to facilitate the rollout of C cis compliant um, infrastructure or what do they do to try and help yeah, so this is uh, this is the rule package for CIS. So what AWS does is they keep an eye on all the updates for the CIS framework, and they create um, um, they, they keep updating that CIS um, package rule to stay in uh, up to date with the actual CIS framework. So what happens is, for example. Um, Every time there's a new release for the CIS um, benchmarking um, framework, AWS will go and adopt that into their scanning um, um, package, rule package, and you will get that automatically. So you stay up to date. So and that's, these really, that's really a strong tip for like moving security left as, as quickly as possible. I'm sure that, that there are costs associated with it. But like, if you want to try and help move security to the left, then paying attention to this sort of stuff might make a lot of sense. Absolutely, absolutely. So when you go and um, deploy this environment um, or deploy this um, this method of um, um, automatically scanning, you you're avoiding you're creating a shift to the left by remediating mistakes or remediating issues automatically. Um, ideally. You'd want that even earlier on. You'd want your developer to be developing with security in mind. You want your infrastructure people to be building infrastructure with security in mind. But this is the next best thing where you've got such a large team and you're bound to see issues and you need continuous compliance in that space. How do I achieve that? This is one way of achieving it. Awesome. There's a couple more questions. Um, somebody asking, how, how does AWS Inspector compare to the likes of Nessus? Is that a fair um, sort of comparison, or are they are they working in sort of different spaces a little bit? Um, interesting one. Um, Nessus is a lot more commercial. Um, you get a lot more reporting out of Nessus than you can do with AWS Inspector. But with uh, the cost of running a AWS Inspector justifies it in AWS. Um, so cost-wise, they are quite different. Uh, you get more reporting from Nessus. Um, you get um, customization from Nessus, opposite to Inspector, where you've got rule packages that you have to use. And the report is standard. That's your summary of finding. But um, um, AWS Inspector allows you to trigger lambdas and integrate with API gateways so you can bake it into pipelines. This is what enables you to shift things to the left. Um, with Nessus, it's a bit more effort to do that, and the price comparison is significant. Sure. Okay, so um, I've just got a couple a couple of more questions. This, they all come flooding on <laughs> in. <laughs> um, so, yeah, which either means that your talk's been absolutely terrible, 
or people have just not been listening at all. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're provoking like a lot of brain power happening here. So um, pa Pawan uh, is asking uh, if it's possible to share any white papers or blogs for getting started and provide a bit of sort of further exploration. Yes, go on my blog. Um, <laughs> follow me on Medium. I should probably put the link in there. Uh, I've got a blog on AWS Inspector that, um, that is relevant to this topic as well. Um, there's a lot of AWS material that cover what we're talking about and how to do them. Um, in terms of white papers, there's also a bit of white papers in there. Um, if you're doing the security specialty training also in AWS, it comes up quite frequently as well. Awesome. Maybe uh, at the end of the talk, we can get you just to pop, pop your details into the chat window uh, so people can spam you on Medium. Absolutely. I am about to get it right now. <laughs> awesome. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, there is. I think we probably should let you actually continue talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, at, at some point, and then we'll come back. So once you get a natural break to pause for breath, flip back over and we'll continue with some more questions. <laughs> no, this is this is great. Um, I am right at the end of the sessions for um, lessons learned. So I'm at the Q and A's. Um, so the idea was this, this talk was gonna run for um, 20 to 30 minutes. We're up to 40 minutes, which is great. Um, so now as the floor is open, all questions um, allowed. Awesome, okay. Uh, so we've got a question here saying, can uh, AWS Inspector cover Docker and EKS workloads? Um, interesting question. Not by default, no. Um, by default, you cannot uh, run it with um, um, Docker, um, Docker workloads, so Docker containers, but you can work your way around it and actually go and um, bake it into your Docker file and make it work. So if you're... Um, if you're clue enough with getting these things working, you'll you'll get it to work. But this is not a supported configuration as it stands. Okay, awesome. Um, I've got I've got a question. You you mentioned that there's an agent that's involved with this. Correct. Um, at certain times, are there um, are there any guidelines or any experience that you have by which we can actually get the agents installed by policy? So, so people don't need to think about actually installing this. It is automatically installed. So security is shifted to the left immediately. Absolutely. So um, let me show you something. So if you go into system, config, um, system manager, in your system manager, you've got um, commands runs. Um, so um, if you're familiar with system manager, you can do something called uh, run command. There are playbooks there that can help you deploy that agent automatically, that run continuously in the background that you can schedule, or you can trigger from a pipeline as well. Um, but again, this is AWS mindset. Not uh, um, you're not thinking system center, SCCM or Ansible or Puppet or Chef or anything, right? So you've got the choice, either or. I prefer to use native tools. That's just uh, my way of doing things. And the next, I was going to say, Harshal has just has just asked the question that I was going to ask, and that is the natural extension: Is this agent going to cane my machine? <laughs> As in, what's um, the memory, memory and CPU footprint? I am yet to see any performance impacts um, on an environment from the scans. Now, obviously, it has a performance impact. Um, it's just not significant. Um, from the environments that I've scanned, I've seen things in, uh, I've seen uh, spikes of 5 6% CPU loads, but this is relevant to the stuff that I'm scanning. Um, your application may be a lot more extensive and may take more. But no, I have not seen anything significant. Nothing that's going to trigger a load balance uh, to go and um, scale out your environment, if it makes sense. Yeah, I think um, Amazon's reputation would, would probably be on the line, like if it's going to have a big <laughs> impact. But there will always, like with any agent, there's going to be an impact, but hopefully not too much. Absolutely. So uh, you need to excuse in the background, I've got both a golden retriever that's just come into the room. It's very excited to see me. And a thunder and lightning storm happening outside, which is awesome. 
Um, the perfect storm. Yes, the perfect storm. <laughs> that's exactly right. Okay, so Harshal, uh, does Inspector also help to patch the vulnerabilities automatically as long as they're OS related or general software related? Mm, good question. So when we're taking action, so remember this is a vulnerability assessment tool. Uh, vulnerability assessment or vulnerability scanning is different than patching systems. This is a tool that helps you identify problems. Yes, part of your Lambda can be, um, so if I go to my Lambda, part of my Lambda can be something like trigger um, sudo yum update minus y, uh, right? And that will force the operating system to update, for example. Um, but this is not the intent for it. Um, you can do something with it, but it will be limited to what you're, um, what you're looking for. In terms of OASP um, and application um, vulnerabilities, it would be difficult to automate all of them out. It's good to know that it's going to give you the heads up as soon as possible, though. So yes. uh, we've got another we've got another couple more questions coming in, uh, and one and one from me again. <laughs> I do apologize. Uh, you mentioned that there's. Um, IAM permissions that are required to be able to give minimum privilege to allow this thing to work. Yep. Uh, just talking sort of generically, <clears throat> um, what what uh, what is what is your guidance for people that are trying to get just enough permissions sorted out to allow something to run? Are, are there any cheats that or tools that can help? Uh, without opening up all the permissions, how, how do you work out exactly what you need when you've got a tool like this? Um, I tried doing that and I broke it. <laughs> it wouldn't yep. work. Um, so best the best thing you can do is follow the AWS guidelines on what permissions you need. Um, and that's yep. coming from someone who tried to bang their head against the wall a few times to <laughs> figure out what he missed what did i miss because i went with the default that i think it needs um when it says there's a role that you need to assume use that one right okay <laughs> so tip from the top rtfm <laughs> right <laughs> yeah <laughs> follow, follow the process <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's that's enough of me. Right, we've got we've got a few more questions. Uh, wow! Does great. AWS Inspector? Sorry, somebody shouting out there. Oh no, no, I said sorry. Uh, I said great. We've okay, many questions. I thought some somebody else had grabbed a microphone. Okay, so yes, yeah, so we've got some questions. Does AWS Inspector take care of CVEs from other databases like um, NIST vulnerability database? Um, let me share something with you. So, um, by default, um, the volume, actually, I don't have it in a, on me at the moment. Um, I can pass it on if you, um, find me on LinkedIn and I'll, uh, message you about it. Um, by default, um, vulnerabilities reported, uh, um, to AWS, it uses, um, certain rules packages. Um, and those are not customizable. Um, so if you want to use an additional rule package, you'll have to reach out for AWS and they'll need to be um, re multiple requests coming through for, for them to adopt it, if it makes sense. Awesome. Uh, we've got another one here. C can we configure the agent to assess from the standpoint of the Fed ramp or US federal government or GD uh, GDPR compliance? This becomes outside of vulnerability assessment. This is a good question, but this is more of a compliance question, right? You're looking for a compliance framework, and you're looking for um, um, you're looking for um, a tool that provides you with continuous compliance. Your other bets are tools, um, the likes of um, Dom Nine and um, Cloud Conformity, and these sort of tools. Yeah. yeah, this is uh, this is not the right tool for this job. Okay, cool. Uh, please keep the questions coming. Uh, Marwin's charging at $150,000 an hour. We're just going to have to swipe <laughs> your credit card first. <laughs> so, next one from 
Uh, Deep Sika is asking, does AWS Inspector do configuration scanning? Uh, yes, correct. One of these, to, one of these uh, rule packages is related to configuration scanning. In fact, um, so this is the security best practice for Amazon Inspector. It does show you some configuration um, scanning. Um, this is not necessarily extensive. Um, in a sense that you, it sees, for example, password maximum age in your environment, uh, root login, SSH versioning. Um, um, it's not necessarily a configuration scanner, but it does do the default and uh, the things that you need. Um, also, CIS is also partially configuration. Um, so you will see that as well. Um, Network reachability is a configuration scan as well because it, re, it, it looks, uh, it analyzes stuff like route tables, security groups, subnets, et cetera, et cetera. 